Oh, Jesus, you are good. Jesus, you are good. A couple months ago, I was, uh, I was waking up on a, a Sunday morning, and I meet with Micah and Sam Parslow for like a book study. We were doing a book study, and I felt like the Lord told me on Sunday morning, Joe, you have a gift to make people feel uncomfortable. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And I told, I told Micah and Sam, and I said, hey, I felt like the Lord told me this morning that I have a gift that, that, that uh, I make people uncomfortable. And Micah said, yeah, you definitely have that gift. <laughs> and Sam said, I'm feeling uncomfortable right now. It's working, praise the Lord. So this morning, I hope that you feel uncomfortable. I hope that God pushes you out of your comfort zone this morning because I'm talking about praying in tongues. Ooh, everybody's like, oh no, not praying in tongues. It's, I'm uncomfortable. Yeah, I have a gift. <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, I said. Come on, praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. You guys need to get uncomfortable. If you're sitting in the same seat you sit in every Sunday, you're comfortable, get out of that seat and change seats. You know what I'm saying? I'm just kidding. All right. All right. Let's pray. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, I invite you here. Come and have your way. Come and have your way, Holy Spirit. We invite you here. We want you. We are desperate for you, Holy Spirit. We're desperate for you. We are lovesick for you. There is no lovesick heart that you won't come and heal. There is no one desperate that you won't come and touch this morning. So I pray that you would come, Holy Spirit, and come and touch us. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. So I haven't preached in a long time, so I got all this pent-up energy. Are you guys ready to be just yelled at this morning? <laughs> Woo, doggy, it's coming. It's coming. There's fire. All right, so back in 2022, which was like a month ago, I was praying and I was asking God, God, what do you want to do at Adoration Church? What do you have for the body of Christ here that you are going to do in 2023? And the Lord gave me this verse, Zechariah 12.10. I believe this is what the Lord said to me. He said, and I will pour out, I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and pleas for mercy so that when they look on me, on him who they have pierced, they shall mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and weep bitterly over him as one weeps over a firstborn. I believe the Lord wants to pour out on you guys spirit of grace and prayer, supplication, pleas for mercy, talking to God. I believe the Lord wants to move you into a place where you are so close with Holy Spirit that it's like this, where you are praying with him in the spirit. And I believe that one of those things is praying in tongues or praying in the spirit. And I'm gonna go over it this morning. So I hope that a lot of lies that have been told in the church and the large church of general is some people just say tongues is not for day, for today. Or tongues is weird, so I'm just not gonna do it. Or I don't understand what tongues is all about, so I'm just not going to do it. But let me tell you something. I believe the enemy has been attacking tongues, praying in tongues, and, and the mind it offends the mind so much that we just don't do it because it is the most powerful thing Christians can do today. Praying in tongues is the most powerful thing that you can do as a believer. If you don't believe me, just wait till the end of the message. You'll believe me. So this morning at the end of the message, I want to pray over you guys. 2 Timothy 1.6 says this, For this reason I, I, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. So what was Paul's job? Paul's job was to lay his hands on Timothy 
And God's job was to give Timothy the gift. And so this morning, I believe that the Holy Spirit wants to give you a gift of grace, which grace can also, unmerited favor and power. I believe God wants to give you power today. And I believe he wants to give you a spirit of prayer. Are you, are, you, are you guys ready to receive what the Lord wants to give you this morning? This is all biblical, what I'm talking about. Paul laid his hands on Timothy, and Timothy received a gift from God. God, who created everything, the heavens and the earth. It says, he, oh, and he created the stars. Like billions of stars in our galaxy, and then there's billions of galaxies, and there's billions of stars in those galaxies. God is a big God, and if he wants to give you a gift, he'll stinking give you a gift. But you have to take it. You have to want it. You have to receive it. When the Israelites were roaming in the desert, God said, I give you this land. What was the next words that came out of God's mouth? So take it. You have to take it. It's not enough that God wants to give you a gift. You have to take it. The Bible says the kingdom of heaven has been suffering violence and the violent take it by force. They take it. The kingdom of heaven isn't suffering. It's saying that the people who want more of God take more of God. And they're willing to look foolish and stupid because speaking in tongues is one of the stupidest, most foolish things that you can do. Joe, you look stupid. You look ignorant. Yeah. And I believe as I go lower, as the more foolish I look, the more God will be exalted. And the, the, the Bible says, humble yourself and he will exalt you. But if you exalt yourself, you'll be humbled. And a lot of times we don't believe this, but quenching the spirit, grieving the Holy Spirit can look a lot of like this. Hmm. I'm not doing that. I'm not going to look like a fool. I'm not going to raise my hands and chair. I'm not going to shout. You're quenching the spirit. Listen, if, if I wanted to give Addison a gift for her birthday, and I said, Addison, here's a gift, and she just goes, yeah, no thanks. I don't want that gift. Do you think I'm going to be grieved? I'm going to be like, man, I prepared this thing for you. I want to give you good gifts. I'm your father. And then you just go, nah, not interested. That gift is a little weird. I don't want that one. All right. Enough of that. Romans 8, 26 through 27. You've got your Bibles. We're going to go through a lot of scripture verses, but I promise you they will all be good. Because the whole Bible's good. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the spirit helps in our weakness. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought. Did you, has anyone ever told you that you're terrible at praying? You are a terrible prayer person. You don't know how to pray. You don't know what to pray for as you ought. You're terrible at prayer. I'm not, don't get mad at me. Get mad at Paul. Get mad at the Holy Spirit. He's the one who wrote it. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to what? According to the will of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John 14, 16, Jesus said this, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Another helper. Do you know who Jesus is talking about? The Holy Spirit is with us. When Jesus said, I'm going to give you another, that word another means the exact same thing as I am, but different. How many people would love it if Jesus walked into the room this morning? Ooh, 
yeah, whoop doggy. Yeah, things would get real right then if Jesus walked into the room. But Jesus said this. He said, I'm sending you another, the Holy Spirit. It's like if you went to Chick-fil-A and you said, and you ordered a sandwich, a chicken sandwich. It was delicious. You ate it. It's in your belly. And then you go back and you say, I want another. It is the exact same chicken sandwich, but it's different. The one that you ate is in your belly. But I want another. It's, that's who the Holy Spirit is. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit is better. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because the Holy Spirit can come into the room. He can be here at this church. He can be at the church down the street. He can be at the church in India. He can be at the church in Africa. He can be at the church in China. All at the same time. Hallelujah. And a helper. He is the paraclete. He is the one who helps us in our prayers. Because you don't know how to pray. You don't know what to pray for as you ought. So we need the Holy Spirit. Amen. Does everybody want the Holy Spirit? Yes. Come in power. It is so important to pray in the Spirit. Let me tell you this. You have a body. You have a soul. And you have a spirit. Amen. Amen. You understand, your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Paul says, I I will pray in the spirit, I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray with my mind. So when you're, there's a difference. You're praying with your mind and you're praying with the spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. It's so important that we have the Holy Spirit because you don't know how to pray. You're not a good prayer person thing. (laughs) But when you have your soul and your mind and your will and your emotions, how many of our prayers go like this? Lord, thank you for this day. Bless me this day. I pray that you'd be with me. Thank you, Jesus. Follow me. Hallelujah. Bye. Right? You're praying for yourself. You're praying out of your mind. You're praying out of your will. You're praying out of your emotions. You're praying soulish prayers. God wants you to pray spirit prayers. Amen. Pray with the spirit. Always praying in the spirit. Hallelujah. Always praying in the spirit. God is waiting on you to allow him to pray through you. But our mind and our will and our emotions get in the way many times of what the Spirit wants to pray through us. Our mind and our will and our emotions get in the way because my feelings, I feel, oh, I'm going through this horrible thing, so I need to pray about it. What if the Spirit doesn't want you to pray about that at all? What if he wants you to pray about something totally else, something totally different? Hallelujah. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. Because Isaiah 55, 8 through 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Hallelujah. What the Spirit wants to pray is more than likely not what you want to pray. Mike Miller, who, who does a fantastic teaching on tongues, he's part of the Upper Room Church, he says, he says, I went and prayed for my kids. I put my hand over and I prayed in tongues over every kid. Prayed in tongues, prayed in tongues. And then he, he said, Holy Spirit, what did I pray over them? And the Holy Spirit said, you are praying for yourself that you would be a better dad. <laughs> When you pray for your kids, have you ever prayed for yourself? No, that's my will, my mind, my emotions. I need to be in touch with the spirit. Hallelujah. Let's dive into this. 1 Corinthians 14. All right, open your Bibles if you've got it. Otherwise, follow along on the screen or open your Bible phones. For one, 1 Corinthians 14, two, for one who speaks in a tongue speaks not to men, but to God, for no one understands him, but he utters mysteries in the spirit. So when you're praying in tongues, hallelujah, you're not praying, I'm not talking to you. 
I'm not praying to you. I am praying to God, and I don't know what I'm saying to God. Let me just throw this in there. Tongues is not, you're not just going to be walking in Walmart one day, and the Spirit's going to come on you, and you're just going to, it's not like that. It's not going to be out of your control. The Spirit of the prophet is in, uh, what's the word? Control of the prophet. So you can control tongues. You can start it and you can stop it whenever you want. Are you ready to be made uncomfortable this morning? All right, let's pray in tongues for just 10 seconds. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Stop. Is anybody still speaking in tongues? No. Because you can control it. Amen. Verse uh, 14, 13 through 15. Therefore, one who speaks in a tongue should pray that he may interpret. So when you do that, when you get uncomfortable and you, uh, you let your mouth be used by the Holy Spirit... You should pray also that you interpret what you're saying. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. Do you understand what he's talking about? The spirit prays when you're praying in a tongue, but your mind is unfruitful. Your soul is unfruitful. What am I to do? So Paul says, I will pray with my spirit, but I will pray with my mind also. I will sing. You can sing in tongues. Sing praise with my spirit, but I will sing with my mind also. So here's a, a little thing. I watched uh, Richard Roberts, who if you've ever heard of Oral Roberts University, he does this teaching on tongues where he'll say, pray in tongues for 15 seconds and then stop and pray in English or whatever your native language is. And you'll be shocked what comes out of your mouth. Because you'll be asking the Lord, I want to interpret what I'm saying in tongues. So every single person in this room can do this at your closet. You can pray in tongues, stop, pray in English. Oral Roberts didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit. The Lord visited him one day and said, I want you to build a university and it's gonna be based on the Holy Spirit. And he said, I don't know anything about the Holy Spirit, so I better start studying what the Bible has to say about the Holy Spirit. And he came across this tongues thing and he started going, okay, I'm gonna pray in tongues and then interpret. He had no money, no land, no know-how. He had no education. And, but God told him to build a university. And so he said, God, you're going to have to help me build this university or I'm not going to do it. So he would go and he would come into a problem and he would go into his room. He would pray in tongues and then pray in English and God would give him the answer that he needed in English. He built an entire university off of praying in tongues and stopping and praying in English. And Doyle Plegenkel, how I many of you know Doyle Plegenkel? He, he, he called me, because I did a little video on Facebook or something. He called me and he said, I went to Oral Roberts University and he did this teaching on praying in tongues and stopping and praying in English. And he said, I bought this car that was a gas guzzler and gas prices went through the roof. And he's like, oh no, God, what should I do? He went down to the dealership, tried to trade it in. They were going to give him like 50% of what he paid for. And he's, he was out of his mind stressed. And he said he went into a broom closet and he prayed and he, in tongues. And he went in tongues and then he stopped and prayed in English. And the words that came out of his mouth in English were, don't worry about it. Gas prices are going down. <laughs> he's like, where did that come from? And sure enough, two months later, gas prices went below what they were before, and they stayed like that for years. You can build your life based on the Holy Spirit. You can pray in tongues, ask God for the interpretation, and he'll give it to you. Having problems at work, having problems with a business, pray in tongues and interpret it in English. The Holy Spirit will give you what you need. Do you understand what I'm saying? Is Joe crazy now? Joe's turned into a crazy person. Praise the Lord.
<laughs> uh, so I was praying in tongues. I'll, I'll tell you a little story. I was praying in tongues. Uh, my wife had a little, has, still, we're still going through it, has l- l- lumps on the back of her neck that are like lymph nodes. And so I began to worry and I began to go, Lord, what is going on? What's happening? You know, does my wife have cancer? And they would, she would go into the doctor and the doctor would say, it's inconclusive. We don't know. We're going to run these tests. Yada, yada. Nothing. Nothing from the Lord. So I went before the Lord in prayer. And I just felt like the Lord led me to speak, pray in tongues. And I just began to pray in tongues. I had no idea what I was saying. No idea what I was saying. And then, and then all of a sudden, the words that started coming out of my mouth were, it is done. Don't worry. It's done. Amen? Do you believe that God speaks to us? I believe that God speaks to us. 1 Corinthians 14.4. The one who speaks in a tongue builds up himself but the one who prophesies builds up the church. You're building yourself up when you speak in tongues. The kids are going crazy downstairs. (laughs) Did the Holy Spirit visit them before us? My goodness. (laughs) You build yourself up by speaking in tongues. Do you believe that? Have you ever been speaking in tongues and you just, all of a sudden you feel better? You have peace, you have joy, you have comfort. You have the Holy Spirit who is the helper. He comes when you speak in tongues. And you go, Joel, I've never spoken in tongues. I don't know how to do it. You just do it. You just do it. It's almost like when David, you know, in the Psalms, he says, awake my soul. Awake, my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Who is David talking to in the Psalms? He's talking to himself. He's talking to his soul, right? He's saying, come on, wake up, soul. Bless the Lord. He is worthy. Come on. Come on, my will. Come on, my emotions. Come on, my feelings. Come on. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my mind. Come on, bless the Lord. That's what he's doing when he's, when, he's, when he's talking to himself. And you go, well, I don't like that. I don't like it that he's talking to himself. He's not praising God that way. No, he's encouraging himself to wake up, to bless the Lord. I, I think it's the same way with tongues. You start You just start speaking in tongues. And then eventually the Holy Spirit takes over. And then you're going crazy. And then you've got peace, joy, love, all in the Holy Ghost. But it starts, it's almost like speaking in tongues, almost just going like, what am I doing? I'm telling my spirit, wake up. Wake up, spirit. I'm telling my mind, don't be offended by saying this language. Don't be offended, my emotions. Come on, wake up. Wake up, spirit within me. Pray to the Lord. Do you hear what I'm saying? I am am getting my spirit awakened. Because how many of us know as we walk through life, we get muddy feet and we get dirt flung on us from every which where and the enemy comes at us And tries to ruin our relationship with the Lord. And what we need to do is just kind of wash. Wash it off. And just be like, get off. Come on. Come on, spirit. Wake up. Bless the Lord. And so Paul said in Jude 120. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith. And doing what? Praying in the Holy Spirit. This is how you build yourself up. When I prophesy, when I say, Isaiah, I have a word from the Lord for you, I'm building Isaiah up, right? How can I build myself up? Speaking in tongues, praying in the spirit. I'm building myself up. 
I'm building myself up in my most holy faith. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians 14, 5. Now, I want you all to speak in tongues. Paul says, I want you all to speak in tongues. I want you all to speak in tongues. And I want to say that to you. I want you all to speak in tongues. I want you all to be very uncomfortable. You've got to be able to do this to build yourself up in your most holy faith. But he wants them to prophesy too to build up the church. Amen? So we should be prophesying as well. We should be speaking in tongues. We should be prophesying in 1439. Eagerly desire to prophesy and do not forbid speaking in tongues. Is it unfortunate that many churches today totally are disobeying the scripture? They are disobeying the Holy Spirit of God by not allowing Speaking in tongues. Ouch. They're grieving the Holy Spirit, I believe that, by saying, Holy Spirit, you can do this stuff. You can bless the teaching, but I want nothing to do with speaking in tongues, Holy Spirit. So don't do that speaking in tongues stuff. You're grieving the Holy Spirit because he wants to give you a gift and you're rejecting it. He says, this is good for you. This is how you build yourself up. How many of you need to be built up today? We all need to be built up. (laughs) 1 Corinthians 14. This one is a good verse to send to your family on Thanksgiving. You just say, I thank God I speak in tongues more than all of you. (laughs) I mean, Paul was kind of a little turd here. He's like, I speak in tongues more than all of you. Can you imagine Paul just going around speaking in tongues? And everybody's just looking at him like, Paul, stop it. He's like, I'm better than you. (laughs) Oh, boy. (laughs) Hallelujah. Okay. Okay, this one's fun for me. Because I I believe this is where the power lies in praying in the spirit, in praying in tongues. I believe this is where the power lies. Are you ready? Genesis 11, 6. And the Lord said, behold, they are one people and they have all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they propose to do will be impossible for them. Do you guys know what that first language was? It was English. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Some scholars say it was Hebrew. There's nothing in the Bible that tells you what that language was, but they all had one language. Hear what I'm saying? They all had one language. I don't care if you're Chinese. I don't care if you're Japanese. I don't care if you're, what are the other places people are from? African. Canada? Is anybody from here in Canada? Come on. I don't care. French? <laughs> French people are back there. <laughs> I don't care who you are. One language, the spirit language. I believe, I think, maybe, I'm not saying this isn't in the Bible, so I'm just saying maybe. Hear me out. Maybe it was a heavenly language that they spoke. And they had one language. And what did God say about them all having one language? They are one people and they all have one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they propose to do will be impossible for them. Oh, there is a secret hidden language called tongues. That every believer has access to do. You have access to speak in tongues. Every single believer has access to the Holy Spirit to pray in the Spirit, to pray with the Spirit, to, 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 to say, surrender their tongue, surrender their mouth to the Holy Spirit. And might I dare say, when you do that, nothing will be impossible for you.
you go, Joe, you're crazy. Yeah, I'm crazy. Wouldn't it just make sense that when God sent the Holy Spirit, the first thing he dealt with was their language? James says the tongue is a restless evil, setting on fire entire forests, so small. And the Holy Spirit came and he dealt with their tongue. And they all spoke in tongues. And the fire of God fell. Hallelujah. 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 John 14, 12 through 17. I want to read this whole thing to you. Jesus said this, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. Jesus is saying this. I, the works that I do, you'll do. And guess what? And greater works than these will he do because I am going to the Father. This is the Bible. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Whatever you ask in Jesus' name, he will do. So the Father may be glorified if you ask anything in my name. I will do it. He says it twice. I'll do it. Ask me. I'll do it. Ask me. Hallelujah. Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Verse 16, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another what? He will give you another, the same as Jesus. And the what? The helper. Because you don't know what to pray for. You don't know how to pray, but Jesus will send you another. And for 17, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him for he dwells with you and he will be in you. 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 When God came down, he confused their language so that They couldn't do anything so that they couldn't do the impossible. Nothing would be impossible for them. So God confused their language. And when Jesus came, he died on the cross and he rose again on the third day and he sent the Holy Spirit. He sent the helper because he wants us to have whatever we ask for in Jesus' name. Whatever we ask for in Jesus' name according to the Spirit. And he sent the helper to you so that you would know what to pray for. Woo! Hallelujah! We need you, Holy Spirit! We need you, Holy Spirit! Woo! We need you, Holy Spirit! Come, Holy Spirit! Fire, come! Holy Spirit, come! Holy Spirit, come! You guys want more? Come on. You want more? Did you come to church this morning expecting a touch from God? If you did not come this morning, you need to repent for not coming, expecting a touch from God. Repent and say, God, I came here unexpected. It was hard for me to get out of bed this morning because I wasn't expecting you to do anything. But the Holy Spirit is here. Hallelujah. He wants to touch you. He wants to touch you. He wants to touch you. He's waiting on you to receive him. He's waiting on you to receive him. He's waiting on you to receive him. Do you understand? You don't go to a gas station and go, gosh, I sure hope they have gas there today. You don't, you don't go to your favorite restaurant and go, man, I hope they have food. I sure hope they have food. I think, I, I don't know if they'll have food. I don't know. You don't go to Walmart and be like, man, I hope they have groceries that I can buy. I sure, I guess we'll show up and we'll find out if the groceries are going to be there. Why do we go to church? Why do we come before an almighty God who wants to touch you, who wants to move in your body and (laughs) ruin your life? He wants to ruin your life. Come on. Why do we come to church and go, I hope God shows up or I don't know if he'll show up. I'm I'm not in the mood for God to show up. Why'd you come? Why'd you even come to church? Come on, hallelujah. Soren, get up there. Judah, come on, get up there. Hallelujah. Are you guys ready? Do you want the Holy Spirit? Do you want him? Do you want him? Do you want him? Do you want, I'm going back up here. Hallelujah. Can we do this? 
Ephesians 6 to 18, this is the armor of God, the armor of God, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication, praying at all times in the spirit. What does it look like to pray at all times in the spirit? It looks <laughs> it looks like this. All the time. All the time. If you begin doing that, all of a sudden you'll find yourself in Walmart looking at stuff, praying in tongues, and then people will look at you funny and you'll just be like, oh, oh. I'm uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable. God says this. I believe this. I believe this. And when you pray in tongues, it confuses the enemy. It confuses the enemy. Exodus 23, God made this promise. He said, I will send my terror before you and you will throw into confusion all the people against whom you shall come and I will make you, all your enemies turn their backs on me. I will throw them into confusion. Can I read this really long verse? It's long, 2 Chronicles 20. But I believe that this is what happens when you pray in tongues. The enemy is scattered. The enemy is confused. And we get to go into the enemy's camp and plunder the enemy. 2 Chronicles 20, verse 1. After this, the Moabites and Ammonites, and with them some of the Menu Meunites, I don't know, came against Jehoshaphat for battle. And some men came and told Jehoshaphat, a great multitude is coming against you from Edom, from beyond the sea, and behold, they are in Hazan Tamar. Hmm, praise the Lord. Does anybody in here play piano? Artina, praise the Lord. Thank you, Artina. Then Jehoshaphat was afraid and he set his face to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah assembled to seek help from the Lord from all the cities of Judah and they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. In your hand are power. In his hand are power and might so that none is able to withstand you. Did you not, our God, drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? And they have lived in it and have built for you in it a sanctuary to your name, saying, if disaster comes upon us, the sword, judgment or pestilence or famine, we will stand before this house and before you for your name is in this house and cry out to you in our affliction and you will hear and save hallelujah when you stand before the Lord and you pray and you say God come and save me he will save you and now behold the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir whom you would not let Israel invade when they came from the land of Egypt and whom they have avoided and not destroyed them behold they reward us by coming to drive us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. O oh, our God, will you not execute judgment on them? For we are powerless against this great horde that is coming against us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you, God. Meanwhile, all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives and their children in the spirit of the Lord. He came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah. Yeah, a Levite of the son of Asaph in the midst of the assembly. And he said, listen, all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid. Hallelujah. Do not be dismayed at this great horde for the battle is not yours, but it is God's tomorrow. Go down against them. Behold, they will come up by the ascent of Ziz, you will find them at the end of the valley east of the wilderness of Jeruel. An incredible prophecy. The Spirit of the Lord came. And he says this, you will not need to fight 
in this battle. Stand firm, hold your position, see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid, do not be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them and the Lord will be with you. Then Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell down before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites of the Kohathites and the Korathites stood up to pray Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. Hallelujah. And they rose early in the morning and they went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And when they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God and you will be established. Believe his prophets and you will succeed. And when he had taken counsel with the people, he appointed those who were to sing to the Lord and praise him in holy attire as they went before the army. And they said this, they sang, Give thanks to the Lord for his steadfast love endures forever. And when they began to sing and praise, the Lord set an ambush. The Lord set an ambush against the men of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir who had come against Judah so that they were routed. For the men of Ammon and Moab rose against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, devoting them to destruction. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they all helped to destroy one another. And when Judah came to the watchtower of the wilderness, they looked toward the horde and behold, there were dead bodies lying on the ground. None had escaped. No one had escaped. Hallelujah. None had escaped. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take their spoil, they found among them in great numbers goods, clothing and precious things which they took for themselves until they could carry no more. They were three days in taking the spoil. It was so much spoil. Woo. When you pray in the spirit, nothing is impossible for you because you're praying according to the will of God when you're praying in the spirit. Isn't it much better to pray in the spirit than to pray soulish prayers which don't get answered? <laughs> Hallelujah. When we grab a hold of the spirit, we know what to pray for. When we grab a hold of the spirit, life comes into your body. Life comes into your soul. We need the Holy Spirit. So let's stand. When the Holy Spirit begins to touch you, I want you to come forward. So if the prayer team could come forward. I want the prayer team to pray for you. Colin, I think you're on the prayer team. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to be, begin to expect the Holy Spirit to come and touch you. Expect that the Holy Spirit's going to touch you this morning. Close your eyes, lift your hands to the Lord. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. In power. Brokotashebeke Masanta. More, Lord, more, Lord. More, Lord, more, Lord. Just wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Focus on Him. Focus on Him. Hallelujah.